question i start off with uh you ready kaushik i'm going to start now yeah on the okay. best guys perfect thanks kuntal okay ready good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome to another session by the destination knowledge center uh while we've had a lot of webinars on wildlife i think we have not touched upon birding in india specifically and so we thought it was a good idea to talk about birds and the opportunities that you can uh, explore when you're in india with relation to birding uh we have with us an expert on the panel koshik bajibab he's a friend of sita um to give you a quick introduction about koshik before i hand off the presentation to him koshik dons the hat of um Uh, an entrepreneur consultant educator and a naturalist he founded the outdoor wildlife travel company wishbone in 2005 in 2013 he established the wishbone school a place for learning new skills to be self sustained and to inspire conscious and simple living his latest venture has been the backyard camp which started in 2016 uh, it's near bangalore and he is going to talk more about it through the course of the presentation uh he has been constantly inspiring change through varied initiatives uh towards ethical travel conservation and a conscious living in the outdoors we are so excited to have koshik with us and uh, we are really looking forward to hear the stories that you have to share about birding in india over to you koshik thanks tejashri thank you so much welcome all um i have a little uh, uh narrative a story about all the travels that i've done over the over the many years uh, across india so today i'm going to uh, run through a bunch of places that i've been to uh, uh, birds that i've seen what's been exciting what's been very difficult to uh, uh, find one and and my journey over the years on what it took to create a space where i get to see more birds where i live at the moment so um I started Wishbone uh, almost nearly 15 years ago um and uh, in the hope to to be able to spend more time while while I take the group as well I got to uh, interact with a lot of uh, interesting people and saw a lot of interesting places over the years So uh bird watching uh, has been uh, a key part of it uh, because I've spent a lot of time getting back and just uh observing uh, all the interaction in the natural habitat and bird watching is 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 been one of the epitome of all my experiences across over the years i encouraged a lot of people to go birding uh, i have gone with a lot of uh, people who are experienced as well and i find find the uh, entire experience being out in the wild and just listening to birds watching them either the roof thing or building the nest for the young ones uh i i find the entire experience very therapeutic and 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 the beautiful uh, part of birding is you really don't have to travel very far distances to be able to uh, watch watch them uh, at all you could be at in the city because we have urban wildlife we've been sensitizing people about uh the kind of wildlife we have in the cities and how we need to nurture live with them and take care of them while also be less intrusive to their lives so birding can be done uh, right where you are at home uh, it's engaging it it it, it is uh, you could be an individual or a family or a group of friends uh, it, it it's it's always a, a social thing to be able to go out uh, uh watch them learn them see them more um there are um very interesting things uh, uh and interactions that i've had in the past uh, one one interesting story uh, one little uh, incident that happened was uh, a few years ago i was in uh, kaziranga and uh, i uh, shared uh, the safari drive uh, with with other fellow travelers who'd come there and a couple and it it we chatted over many uh, uh sightings that we had through the safari and uh, we we shared inputs on on the animals we saw and whole bunch of things and simultaneously i uh, had a friend who um 
was uh, going through uh, a medical condition. Uh, he had uh, cancer and he, he had read, uh, and at the time when um, he was given very few months to live on, uh, doctor uh, suggested that why don't you uh, pick up something that you want to do or anything that excites you or uh, do something different. So at the time he uh, ended up reading uh, a very interesting book uh, by this author called uh, Phoebe, who um, did have a similar experience in her life where she, she was uh, going through a condition, cancer again, and uh, was given very little time to kind of uh, see what, whatever she'd like to do before she passes on. Um, and she ended up uh, taking a bird watching and uh, traveled in her little time, whatever was there, and I think psychologically it, it did help her uh, uh, and, and deal with, with the issues that she had. She did travel the world and she did travel the world. Uh, I mean, she, she didn't travel the world like no other. She actually traveled thrice across the globe, uh, was one of the few people who uh, crossed the sightings of over 8,000 uh, bird lists across the globe. So she, she was one of the only person who could manage to see so many birds. And ironically, my friend uh, did a similar journey uh, way back uh, 10 years ago. He's still birding. Uh, I won't name him uh, uh, due to, and he's a very well-known person in the country and he's been a phenomenal photographer. Um, and he's crossed the threshold the doctors had given him saying six months now, he, he continues to live on comfortably over 12 years. He too is one of the top birders in the country. And this is what uh, he keeps saying, you know, just it, this entire experience of looking for birds has been so uh, overwhelmingly easing his, 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 his uh, nerves and his, his mind and condition. He's just been able to live on dealing with the condition that he has. When I was in Kaziranga, the person that I shared the um, safari was uh, the daughter of the author of the book. So she too has traced her mother's journey and has gone across the globe over thrice and has crossed 8,000 species in a list of sightings over the years. It's quite beautiful and humbling experience to, to know because when I saw um, uh, one of the I saw, uh, I spotted the brown fish owl while we were on the safari and I, and I, I told her, hey, that, that's a brown fish owl. And, I, and she, she's not an Indian side. I thought she may be uh, uh, not that well aware of Indian species. And I, I, I took an extra effort to actually pull out my camera and say, that's, that's where the bird is in the canopy and that's, that's the bird. Uh, I was quite, uh, only when I got back to Bangalore did I know that I, this is who I traveled with. And th these are the kind of experiences that they've already seen. And it was qu quite a beautiful uh, uh, moment we shared while, while we did actually, we did multiple safaris, three, four safaris. And I, I, this is what I, I keep thinking, you never know what uh, door opens up to you. Uh, uh, if there's an interest, nurture it, because this is, birds are still there in abundance. Uh, there are threatened species across the country. Some, uh, some are very highly threatened, but it's an activity that, that's at your will. If you'd like to know more, you're, it's always there and you can go out and look for them. India is uh, specifically is so diverse. Uh, fortunately, I've traveled um, uh, over uh, nearly uh, 20 plus states uh, right now. And I've, I've, I've been, managed to travel to the corners. Uh, my interest uh, doesn't just lie in the birds, um, uh, largely wildlife. Uh, uh, my, I, in the last 15 years that I've spent, I've spent majority of my time in Western Ghat and I know the area really well and have focused uh, a lot on looking for reptiles, uh, small mammal life and birds. So uh, my interest, my eyes are always kind of glued uh, when I'm in the wild. Uh, for all sorts, from, from the sky all the way down to the ground, you're looking everywhere uh, intently and trying to see what you see because everything surprises me. Um, and 
our country uh, has so many uh, bird species. It's just beautiful to know that we have this resource and uh, and uh, this is what we need to protect and, and uh, try and uh, uh, keep it healthy of, of for future generations as well. India has uh, over 1,300 species of birds, uh, including the migrant, and we, we have uh, such a high level of uh, endemic uh, species, uh, whether it's reptiles or birds or mammals, we, we, we have so many interesting species here. It's, it's quite an exciting uh, uh, place to be, uh, to be born in, absolutely. So uh, I'm going to share uh, now my journey. I mean, uh, ever since uh, I started running Wishbone, it was a dream for me to set up a space where people could come interact with wildlife, uh, with the outdoors, uh, create a sort of a learning space and an interactive space for people to be able to just do that uh, because it's, it's seemingly becoming harder and harder to uh, uh, one uh, habitat loss is so high that we, we don't have spaces where we can actually sit back and just watch that's what we did most of the time so we uh, uh, bought a piece of land uh, nearly 12 years ago um, it was it, it was it was a complete barren land we, we in fact had one tree on the property um, and uh, nothing uh, in, and it was abused with uh, mono, uh, crop farming over the years. Um, there, there was no life on the land and uh, we set out on the task of, okay, let's fence the property and let's see what we can do uh, and start working on the land. So uh, First two years we didn't plant because we, we had to get the basic amenities in and ward off all the uh, feral and cattle coming into the property to safeguard all the saplings. Idea was to create uh, a beautiful habitat uh, for small mammal life um, and uh, and birds, of course. So um, we are, I did uh, do the journey of identifying good species that uh, attract and bring in more birds. Um, and uh, small mammal life. So we planted a lot of fruiting trees, a lot of flowering trees, a lot of uh, uh, this uh, location centric species that flourish here so that even birds find it more um, convenient to kind of use the space either to roost or build nests and, and uh, make, make a uh, endearing habitat just like the forest. So this is the uh, uh, piece of land. Um, this in fact, uh, had a uh, for a brief time we did plant uh, banana plantation here in the lower ground to be able to earn some revenue. Um, elephants walked in uh, to the property. We, we are close to uh, ahead in the slides. I'm going to show you where we are, and we are close to Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary. This this uh, forest has been um, uh, though I've spent a lot of time in the Western Ghats. Uh, this. This is one forest which was so close to the forest, I mean, to Bangalore, sorry. And it, it to which we had access to, it was just a couple of hours drive. So we would uh, end up uh, having dinner, do the entire reptile survey across the highway till from Bangalore to all the way till um, Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary entrance. We would have already seen 10 to 15 snakes on, on, on route. And the minute you enter the sanctuary, it was just, just a gala time. You could, Wherever we looked, we, we ended up seeing uh, life. And Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary was a little less known at the time. Nobody uh, uh, would ever drive uh, to Kaveri because the, nobody knew the the abundance of flora and fauna in the, these forests. Though if the forest went through a series of abuse in terms of poaching and uh, people extracting natural re resources, some of the life wasn't of their interest. A lot of uh, reptiles or small mammal life, uh, that all remained intact and it had enough habitat to kind of flourish. So here's uh, the uh, farm uh, where I am at the moment. And um, we did uh, plant uh, a lot of interesting species trees. And uh, eventually I did set up a bird hide uh, and, and a water bath for them. And I, it, it was almost instantaneously as I started seeing birds coming. It was 
as if they were waiting for a space to kind of because all around us was just farmlands and in this area people don't allow trees to grow because they don't want the shade to be on their land because that affects their mono monocropping uh, uh, terribly so uh, <clears throat> the picture you see is is is, is of the slowly we planted a lot of trees around and we had this bird hide i have this picture reference section this is one of the first things that i ever saw on the farm um if you can uh, see at the background uh, there's a at the distance there's a there's a lake it's a it's nearly a thousand acre lake uh plenty of uh, migratory birds water birds come to i've seen flocks of uh, as high as 1000 1500 birds come into that uh, lake and it's been used as a habitat for a very long time but if you look at uh, interesting bit is uh, uh, how barren and empty the entire property is. i wish i could show you all run through on what's changed and what has changed for me is i sit back i sit back on a bench and i see the activity of birds all around me and i, I just don't need to do and i'm i'm not at all intruding their space because i just sit back mm -hmm. I've seen birds roost, I've seen birds build their nests, and I've seen all uh, sorts of interactions right in front of me. So uh, that's, that's the picture. Now, this is what we become. We have over 500 species of indigenous uh, trees and plants, shrubs native to this area. I did plant a few uh, that I, I personally like because of uh, the travels that I've uh, done in the Western Guards and trees that I wanted to grow. I have a patch of those as well, and in the entire farm has a huge orchard. We uh, all the fruits, ev everything's been just left out for birds, and we've had fantastic bird life. Uh, uh, in, we've covered over 90, 95 plus species, and, and this is just on the property I'm talking about. Outside, there are plenty more. Um, it's interesting the way. Uh, the minute you allow the land to heal and just support a little how it changes. Now it's been 10 years we started seeing fireflies. I've never seen them here in this area. They are in Kaveri Wala Sanctuary. So uh, it, the magic of just letting the space, space be and just allowing the trees to go has done wonders here. This is the aerial view. The next picture uh, shows um, the aerial view uh, where the houses are is where the farm is. Uh, beyond the back, all the hills that you see is Kaveri uh, Wala Sanctuary. <coughs> the river flows right behind the hill hillocks that you see, flows all the way from uh, Kurk. All this river flows all the way down to uh, Tamil Nadu via Krishnagiri and uh, down to uh, further down in Tamil Nadu. This entire stretch of forest has had uh, great bird life, uh, and it, uh, for, for largely, uh, it's, it's, it wasn't. Uh, it, it still isn't in many ways affected uh, by uh, people because every fauna is fantastic in these forests. Though um, there are pilgrimages that people do over the years and uh, annually. So, loads of flocks of people, lakhs of people go into the forest, but still it's remained intact. Mm -hmm. This is also the space where they had the fantastic sighting of the honey badger recently. And I think uh, NCF put out a picture of the animal as well. It's it's in this very forest. So these, uh, with the bird hide that I created, uh, we managed to get some photographs. Uh, this is of the great it coming and enjoying. Uh, it's, it's beautiful to see the interaction because you, they literally have a ball of a time. You see them enjoying being in the water. Um, though the lake is nearby, 10 to 10 minutes walk out from here. Uh, I, I, they, this is a nice shallow enough water for them to be able to dip in, stand in, and uh, also have uh, plenty of feeders all around them. So it's become a, a very interesting space. So uh, the, the next picture was the uh, Baya Weaver and the, uh, the next, third one. It's not just the birds that uh, came in. Uh, we saw, start seeing mongooses coming in uh, because of the water. And, and it's reached a point over the year, we start seeing the young ones come to the hide as well. So the, the, the dearth of water in the area. We are in the dry, uh, this is a scrub jungle. Uh, Kaveri Wireless Sanctuary is, a, the fringes, periphery are all scrub jungle. Uh, 
we seen fantastic interactions and now we have civet cats coming come over as well uh kaveri wala sanctuary um if, if i'm right it's, it's a little over uh, 600 square kilometer area uh, extends into tamil nadu as well uh, in the northern side and um, so the uh, species that i see commonly uh, even at the farm and in kaveri wala sanctuary is, is the blue faced bagoas and uh, it, it's not uh, not an easy setting everywhere but i've seen um, much in abundance in, in this forest more muggles this is a common buzzard uh, third picture from now the next picture and the next one buzzard uh, common buzzard taking off um, you can see the the canopy of the trees all this classic scrub jungle uh, trees with with needles uh, all around and uh, the, the this is another amazing sighting we've had here again more birds of um, uh, at, at the bird hide and the bird bath and uh, the next uh, clip is so now this was the introduction to the space that i live in and and, and the, the neighboring forest surrounding it i'm going to uh, run through uh, the journey of uh, where all i've been there's plenty more but i could uh, hand pick uh, quickly to uh, the place that I go quite often and uh, enjoying going there again and again. Uh, the next uh, clip is of the spot built pelican, uh, which was shot in uh, Rangan Titu. This is uh, again fairly close to where I live and um, it's closer to Mysore as well. Um, Rangan Titu bird sanctuary is. is, is the jewel in many ways because that is a protected sanctuary um, and uh, it's not just the birds that you get to see here it's a normal spot to see crocodiles uh, mother species of crocodiles and otters uh, the, the water body is still healthy uh, we've seen uh, thousands of birds uh, nest uh, in these areas and this is this has been a age-old nesting site uh, to, to the best of our knowledge, we've been nesting with, uh, here for over 200, 300 years. And there's uh, enough literature written during the monarchy and king's times on how uh, they kept seeing birds and how they, it was one of the king's initiative to kind of create a sanctuary out there. And it's a little bit of effort then has kind of still uh, held thing held on and still is a fantastic habitat for birds. It does again cover uh, easily over 100 species of uh, birds and a lot, lot of them being water birds. Uh, if you've uh, ever been to London, if you wish to go um, uh, November till January is, is a good time. We can stretch it till uh, early Feb. This is when a lot of migratory birds come in. The season's already kicked in. A lot of birds already are there at the uh, sanctuary right now. Uh, and it will only improve with the numbers and the variety of species that come into the uh, that river body. That is the same uh, extension of the river that uh, I spoke to you guys about earlier, Kaveri. This is uh, uh, the Kaveri River itself. So from here, I'm headed uh, all little towards uh, northern part of uh, Karnataka. Uh, extremely dry, arid uh, uh, space. Uh, the Aroji Wildlife Sanctuary uh, in Hampi. Um, it, Hampi is well known uh, amongst the climbers circuit. Uh, a lot of climbers across the world uh, over come, come here because it truly has fantastic uh, climbing opportunities and there's still routes that are yet to be opened. Um, there's still so many things in terms of the basic inventory of in the realm of climbing to be done in the area. That's how beautiful the landscape is. It's also the space to see some really cool, interesting wildlife. Uh, the Aroji Wildlife Sanctuary is also partly um, has done a lot of rehabilitation work uh, of uh, the bears that were uh, used in, uh, uh, in, in the past for a lot of uh, practices people had the dancing bells and uh, 
taking them on uh, street rides, which all of them have been stopped, uh, thankfully, uh, through an organization that's working on slot bears. In Daraji Wildlife Sanctuary, um, we've uh, had some phenomenal sightings. Uh, well, one, one of them is um, the Spur Falls, painted Spur Falls. We, you get really interesting uh, sightings at the sanctuary. Uh, it's a great place to see uh, chameleons um, and uh, bird species. They have over, we've covered over 30 species in, in a single sitting for about three to four hours at the uh, bird hide in Daroji. And uh, it's also a very uh, interesting uh, place to see um, sand grouses, painted sand grouses, which you don't commonly see. It, these uh, habitats um, are unique, are very different, are very arid. And uh, people tend to believe that, okay, I, I just see uh, clusters of rocks here and I really doubt there's any wildlife. This place is steaming with wildlife, actually. Again, the river uh, is uh, in uh, Hampi is a phenomenal uh, space to see otters, crocs. Um, I've had uh, at least about 15, 20 species of reptiles that I've seen. Uh, banded racers being one on the top of the list, which is a very rare snake to see, uh, see again. Uh, in the picture, I have a uh, spur fall picture, uh, and uh, that uh, was was quite an uh, interesting sighting. And uh, the sanctuary uh, hosts um, the bears that were rescued are let out freely in, in a pocket in the sanctuary. Uh, to be able to live and roam freely and wild. And it, it's, it's a process of rehabilitation that uh, uh, Wildlife SOS uh, uh, has done over the years of risking all the bears. And a lot of them reside in this forest. Um, and uh, you get to see uh, uh, sloth bears quite easily in this forest as well. So here on, uh, the interesting bit is uh, Karnataka alone has over 500 species of birds, and I still haven't seen all of them. Um, I still, I, I probably might have covered in the years about 70, 80% of the species. There's still more for me to see. I've uh, never had a uh, few uh, bird sightings at all. But yeah, Western Guards becomes super, super interesting because uh, there are species that are very rare, that are very difficult to see. It, it also keeps you on your toes. Uh, uh, the excitement only builds on from here on. Um, and I have spent uh, most of my time in the Western Guards. The Kaveri Wireless Sanctuary, where I am right now, is, is actually part of the Eastern Guards of India. Here on, we, we start looking at uh, uh, the Western Guard uh, profile and see what, what all the species we see here. Now, the, the picture here is the uh, orient-headed uh, thrush. This was uh, photographed uh, near Sakleshpur. Um, the next slide uh, is of Nagarhali. Uh, the bridge between Eastern and Western Ghats uh, is at Bihar Hills, very close to where I am. And from Bihar Hills, the forest move up to Bandipur and Kabini and Nagarhali and, and, and moves up further up towards all the way to Sayadi and further down is Sakti Mangalam, Masinaguri and then Kalati and Pagana. This uh, is a very uh, interesting setting again, I had of uh, wild dogs. It, it was at the place where I was staying. It was right outside my room actually. And um, he was intently waiting because there were at least about 30, 40 peacocks right ahead in front of him. And I, I, uh, we were hope, uh, we were trying to see if he's, he's getting a catch or he's just uh, uh, moving about in the forest. We had a great interaction on nearly three to four hours sighting of uh, back of the toes right where we were staying. Some of the uh, photographs, uh, birds that I've photographed here is uh, the many species, many owl species as well, lots of uh, bird prey, um, crested serpent eagles and uh, changeable hot eagles and so on. This is a picture of a flame back again at the place where we stayed. <coughs> the 
as you go further uh, to the west and north of Karnataka, the, the rainforests um, host so many species of reptiles, amphibians, birds. Uh, it's, 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 it's truly a stunning space. And this arguably, even though uh, I've uh, traveled across the country, there, there have been only two places uh, that, that, that's been like the best in my life in terms of experiences of what you see and how the forest looks. Uh, clearly, the, the waterfall that here is uh, in Agumbe. Um, uh, one of my favorite places to be in uh, Western Ghat. Uh, it, it, it's a uh, beautiful space to see uh, flora and fauna, and uh, it's one of the, arguably it's one of the best places to see uh, snakes as well. Uh, place gets over nine meters of rainfall. It is a uh, heavy rainfall area, and and equally it. it has such stunning wildlife as well. This is uh, Malabar Trogan. This is actually not one of my picture. It's a, it's a picture of my friend, but I've had plenty of uh, Trogan sightings in Nagumbe. Um, they, it, it's, it's such a unique forest. It has a lot of laterite uh, area and meadows and thick uh, 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 literally like shadowed uh, forest you, you hardly can see the sunlight that's how thick the canopy is in, in, in Nagumbe. Birding is challenging, birding is difficult there but you will see species that you will not see in most other places. Um, I've had a great time uh, seeing uh, even other uh, wildlife there, small wildlife, tortoises, um, chameleons, and we've seen uh, at least 30, 40 species of probably more of uh, snakes as well. The pictures, I, this is the Indian robin that I took at the Maidan. The next uh, picture is is actually uh, changeable hockey. Eel. It's interesting how um, uh, geographically, I'm, I'm spreading out my uh, 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 sightings across West, Western Art now. This is, this changeable hockey eel actually was shot in um, Mudumalai, uh, very close to Moya uh, Gorge. And um, and this is again at the foothills of uh, rainforest area. This is an area where you get a lot of rainfall and uh, taller trees, wider canopies and darker forests. And, and, and the animal morphology differs from ge geographically from area to area. The same changeable hockey eagle is a lot more lighter uh, in shading in Kaveri Valley, essentially. Um, uh, maybe to suit uh, the landscape, to adapt, to be able to hunt easily. They, like, a lot of animals, uh, coloration changes uh, from wherever they are found. This uh, changeable hockey eagle uh, was shot again, Masinguri, and another fantastic forest. Great mammal life. Um, uh, gauze in Masinguri are truly stunning and the massive uh, size gauze that you see there. And um, uh, I had a fantastic sighting of uh, this changeable hockey view again at Moral Gorge. The next uh, picture is uh, of the Great Indian Hornbill. This is by far my uh, one of my most favorite. Uh, birds in India. Um, I, I remember the first time ever uh, I had a sighting. Uh, I could only hear the bird. I couldn't sight the bird in the forest where it was. But the bird is so loud, you cannot miss the bird at all in the in the forest. Uh, even if you miss, you will definitely hear them. The ring, uh, uh, sound that they make in the forest is so loud, so unique they are to look at. Um, for, because uh, it's it's such a favorite uh, bird for me, and I've I've kind of spent hours and days watching them, and I've had some thrilling sightings. I've I've sat in, on the, on the forest floor uh, and literally watched these birds just ten feet away from me, uh, uh, and I've seen. Uh, 
a lot of uh, inter interesting uh, interactions. They, uh, the, the males um, fight over, this happens in, in many species uh, in, in, uh, in the wildlife realm. A lot of snakes do, uh, do a male combat, a lot of mammals do a male combat to win over the female to choose who's going to uh, decide to uh, mate. I've seen uh, interactions where uh, males uh, uh, combat up in the air, um, fighting for a female. They, they choose their partners for lifetime. So uh, they stick to one partner throughout their life. So it, it is a struggle and then the male, male does go through a hardship of finding a female. And when they do, they, they live on forever. And um, their bird, their nesting sites are very unique. Um, Great Indian hornbill nesting sites are very unique. They, they nest in the bark of uh, really uh, tall trees and, and the, the female literally goes inside the burrow that the male has built, the hole or a crev crevasse that is there, stays inside the uh, nest, sheds all her uh, feathers to be able to give her warmth and cushioning effect for the young ones. The male uh, feeds the female and the young ones with just a little like a pinholeish kind of small hole, just enough to feed them because that's how protective the mother is of the young ones to keep it away from intruders. And male does all the job of taking care of the entire family. And it, it, this interaction is quite beautiful. And I'll come back to this again on some of the initiatives people have made uh, in even in the Northeast to be able to watch these uh, beautiful interactions in the wild and uh, where all you can see this bird is seen in the Western Ghats and in the North, Northeastern states as well. The next uh, picture is, is of a drongo chasing a black eagle. Black eagle is another majestic uh, bird. Um, I've had uh, numerous, it, it's fairly common if you're going often enough to the forest that you get to see a black eagle. Uh, what what is so cool about the bird is, is just the charisma in, in which it flies uh, through the forest effortlessly. Um, this is this was such a funny incident to watch uh, these two fly because um, the black eagle was actually um, trying to hunt and uh, he they have a habit of uh, gliding right over canop uh, forest canopy. And whenever they see a sighting of a, either a snake or another bird or eggs or whatever they can uh, visit, they just dive in and go pick it up. And they're super agile, uh, super quick uh, uh, flying machines, literally. This incident was so hilarious because the size difference of that drongo is so small, but drongos are the, arguably the most boisterous species of birds in the wild space. They're really, the, the, thugs in the wild, they're not going to, it doesn't matter the size, they will chase any intruder. That's how fierce they are. Uh, Drongo site, the uh, nesting site was very close by um, and uh, it just wouldn't let the black eagle even come near the area. So it was a very, uh, we were overlooking the entire valley and this, this black eagle was flying across the valley. He wouldn't let him be unless he moves away from the entire valley. He tried roosting a couple of uh, trees. The drongo actually chased him continuously and <laughs> ensured he was out of the entire area. The next slide uh, is of the Rufus tree pie. One of my, uh, again, uh, I love watching this bird. Uh, and it's, it's quite a beautiful bird. You see it uh, uh, in many places in southern India, both in Western and Eastern Ghat, as far in the East as near, even near the East here. Yeah have a, uh, you see the bird. Um, so for Rufus tree pie, um, and the, the next picture is again of uh, changeable hawk eagle and crested serpent eagles. Crested serpent eagles, you see them in, in, in all uh, uh, large forests. You, you see them in Kaveri, even in the Eastern Ghats. Uh, you see them in Nagarole, Bandipur, Kabuni, uh, you, it, it's fairly common if you do go to these forests, you, you almost certainly see uh, uh, crested serpent eagle. They solely feed on serpents and they're phenomenal hunters. 
So the next slide uh, takes me down to further south in Western Ghats. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Birders Paradise Thattikad uh, Bird Sanctuary. It's it's unbelievable the number of sightings I've had and the kind of sightings that I've had and the interactions that I've seen. Again, um, uh, similar to the species that we saw earlier, uh, Rufus tree pie, this is the white-bellied tree pie. Um, it is endemic uh, to uh, our forest. It, it's truly a stunning bird with a tail nearly a foot long. So carefully they, uh, they fly through the canopy and so fragile uh, to see them uh, fly across the four forests is, is quite a beautiful bird to see. The Tikard um, uh, is truly a hot spot uh, for birding and uh, the landscape is stunning. It does get a heavy rainfall uh, in the area and, and uh, super huge amounts of uh, number of species, species that you wouldn't see uh, elsewhere, uh, species that are very rare to see, you see them in these, this forest and it, it truly is a bird's paradise. And I think uh, Salim Ali spent a lot of time um, in Tatekar and uh, now it, it is a sanctuary, a bird sanctuary. Some of the unique species that you see here, this is the Sri Lankan frog mouth. Um, it uh, is, yeah, you, you mostly see a pair together all the time. They're so well camouflaged. They, they, they are not necessarily high up in the canopy, so you might have a sighting as low as five feet from the ground. Uh, so you get to see this bird eye level when you stand in the forest, and they unalarmed during the daytime. They just don't move, and um, uh, you, you get a sighting fairly close by which is gets so exciting to see an animal just five or ten feet away from you and as long as you don't make a sound disturb them in any way you, you can get a great sighting of these birds we have uh, i think around about 16 species of uh, endemic birds in southern india we nearly have about 70 endemic species across the country um literally uh if i'm right uh, at least 12 of the endemic species are found in the Descartes. Further down in, uh, in New Greece, you see a couple of them. So um, <clears throat> this yellow-browed uh, bulbul is uh, an endemic species. Mal Malabar whistling thrush is, is, is truly a joy to walk in the forest if you have a thrush following you because it's called the uh, um, old school uh, boy whistling thrush. You basically uh, uh, imitates a young school child, uh, child whistling throughout in the forest. It it really is human like, and, and they have a uh, interesting uh, way of imitating you also if you whistle back. So it, it's it's quite a beautiful bird um, to look at, and uh, it's always joyful. That's that's how the bird sounds, and uh, they're all over uh, more Western Ghats and. Uh, Fortunately, I had a very nice, uh, and this is again an endemic species. Paradise flycatchers are spread out across. Um, you see them uh, in most places, and uh, uh, this this is uh, uh, male, females uh, are even more equally beautiful uh, with a white body and longer tail. <coughs> Next uh, one is uh, flame throated bulbul. Again. Uh, of a fantastic uh, forest species. Uh, you, you see them all only in thick forests. So um, uh, most parts in Kerala, uh, you, you know, Sakleshpur, uh, further down Erbikulam, uh, Periyag, all these places you get fantastic sightings, sightings of the sand. Uh, Blue fly, belly flycatcher. These are all the sightings that I had. Uh, in, in, I put together basically a bunch of photographs that I took in one of my visits. Um, uh, I, for this presentation, I just pulled out a few of the images, uh, let alone uh, multiple visits. Then the kind of sightings we've had uh, in this area is, is phenomenal. 
uh, this starling uh, is again on an endemic species um, and uh, uh, you, it's such a pretty bird and we, uh, we've had some fantastic sightings in Tadekar. The next slide is probably my most sought after. I've, I've uh, gone on trips just to be able to see this one bird um, uh, literally every uh, uh, which good for us we know uh, which are in great condition in terms of natural habitat uh, but this was was probably the toughest find for me more, the more elusive but I've never had we I've had sightings where I've, I've seen them literally like a kilometer away or uh, flying across the valley uh, I, I managed to uh, photograph this bird very recently, actually, uh, I think in 2014 or 15, again in Tadekar. That bird was seen uh, uh, across uh, southern part of Western Ghats, and it, it, it's uh, by far one species of bird that I've gone sort after so many times, and it took many years to, to be able to get this picture. And it, it truly is a stunning bird and it, 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 these birds show the sign of a healthier forest. Uh, they are very shy uh, birds and very difficult to photograph them. <coughs> the next uh, picture is of uh, the landscape in Valparai. Valparai uh, for me personally has been uh, such a revelation in terms of um, uh, literally uh, everything one on how people and animals coexist how they can how they can live together Valparais has been an eye-opener this area was uh, uh, fairly exploited for tea uh, during the colonial times and there's there, there a bunch of large uh, holdings and estates in in Valparai. what it also had was smaller pockets of um, uh, wild forest in these estates so it it has allowed uh, plenty of interesting uh, wildlife in Valparai. I personally like uh, Valparai because um, whenever we've had a sighting of a mammal or a bird we've never had uh, I, they don't shy away and they use to people and this is, is it's amazing how comfortable animals are here one of my top uh, favorite uh, sightings in Valparai is the lion-tailed macaques, which, which, which is a phenomenal conservation effort uh, done by uh, Nature Conservation Foundation, uh, NCF, an organization that's been working uh, across the country. Uh, and uh, lion-tailed macaque, they, they worked on, if I'm right, the, the initial troop uh, was just, just about 18 of them, and now they're over uh, 120 uh, 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 lion tail macaques, which are being conserved, being watched over because their habitat is right uh, in the middle of a national highway that runs through the sanctuary. And uh, uh, it, 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 it's been a challenging landscape to kind of conserve and protect. So, Valparai is, is, has been a fantastic place for me to see. Um, uh, lion tail macaques, which is one of the shyest macaques uh, um, uh, uh, to see and monkeys to see. Um, here I've had uh, some of my rarest and, and, and the first time sightings and uh, probably moments that I think I'll never probably see again. I've seen uh, uh, nearly five to six civet cat, brown palm civet cat babies up in the canopy and, and, and I know these were one. Or one of the, in fact, uh, the sighting happened with one of the uh, guests who had come on CETA itself. Um, uh, uh, a couple from, I think, the Holland. We, uh, we managed to have one of the most spectacular sightings of uh, brown palm civet cats. Uh, this forest is also uh, uh, my favorite uh, space in Tamil Nadu is, is also because uh, the reptile life is also fantastic and, and hornbill sightings have been fantastic again. Yeah. Uh, reptiles, uh, you see the large scale pit viper in, in this area, which, which is the only place probably I have seen large scale pit vipers in till now, though they are spread out fairly, very difficult to see them. Uh, I had a chance to see them in Valparai. The next picture is of the mokul dog. 
uh, uh, sardine that I had right at uh, the space where I was uh, staying in uh, Valparai. And uh, take his blue fly catcher. You see them on all the way till New Greece in the entire Western Ghats. I could go on and yes, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna get to that. Uh, we're actually short, sort of running short of time. So okay. uh, since we've covered the south of India extensively, like you've spoken about the birding spots yeah. of south of India, and we have slides uh, ahead which are from the e- northeast India. Northeast, yeah. How yeah. about we take this up in another session and we can do an entire session dedicated to the East since we are really? running the, Yeah, yeah. Oh, did I just speak for over an hour then? Uh, well, almost an hour. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. That's no, but it was good. really interesting stuff and it's really good to know the stories that you've shared. And, and I think uh, let, let's open the floor to questions and we'll, we'll you know, take that up from there. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 Perfect. So, uh, guys, we're open for question and answers. Um, thanks so much, Kaushik. I mean, it's been, uh, I think the photos were such a treat to just even look at the birds. I'm sure like everyone enjoyed it. So colorful, so beautifully placed and um, picture postcard perfect almost. Uh, it, it, it was such a joy to see all the photos and to learn and know about the various kind of bird life and, and the funny incidents that you've seen, especially mm-hmm. with the drongo and the oh, black eagle yeah. i think yeah. it's it's not a sight that everyone gets to see on a daily basis so i have a question yeah. related to photography it takes a yeah. while for the questions to show so um mm-hmm. how how do you um you know suggest or recommend people when they're taking photos for birding do you have certain tips for them when they start off well uh, it, it times have changed now uh, we 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 did a lot of, uh, we spent a lot of time understanding the animal and then I took up photography only uh, much uh, recently. And I, uh, I, uh, sometimes I end up meeting people who bought the gear, who've never been to the forest and have no idea what the animal is and their behavior and reactions. And I think this is one thing I would say, if you were to, if you are keen on photographing birds, learn and know the animal really well, you'll always get an opportunity to photograph them. Um, I would say, uh, spend a lot of time watching behavior, every behavior matters and you will be able to predict a photograph that you would like to take of that uh, bird. Um, that's one. Um, yeah. And uh, stay put, uh, in, in, if you know the habitat is great, stay and if, if you know there are good perches for you to uh, uh, see, I would say, Especially with birding, I would I would stay put. I wouldn't be uh, moving about. A lot of people nowadays drive to the forest uh, in the fringes of forest to be able to increase the chance of sighting the bird. You'll mm. probably never get a great picture. I would say stay put. Identify interesting habitat. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, literature, and we're all the sightings are fantastic. So identify a spot and stay put and enjoy the moment of being just there. Yeah you will have plenty of opportunities to photograph bird. Yeah. Uh, so I have a, a colleague of mine uh, says, thank you for, sh- hmm. for sharing this knowledge and the pictures are really great. Like I said, I think everybody enjoyed just looking at the pictures. Um, so uh, there's another question from a colleague. She asks, what, is he, what has been your most memorable bird sight see, uh, sighting till date? Till date, till date, uh... There has been uh, a few. I've had few interesting sightings. Some of the uh, bird, uh, bird of prey uh, kills in action. I've seen, I've seen a palace eagle come and take a hedgehog. Both are equally rare animals to uh, miss. And I was watching at the hedgehog. I see this massive uh, eagle come and take over. And uh, I just had a beautiful cuckoo strike fly across where I'm sitting. So um, two uh, definite incidents that I can think uh, were fantastic. One was at Eagle Nest, um, going and uh, uh, birding there and managing to see the Bugon Leosichla, a bird that has been described very recently. Uh, Ramana Treya described the bird, named after the tribe uh, Bugon who lived there. And the tribe doing a phenomenal do- job of uh, conserving that forest. Uh, it is a, a very pretty bird. In fact, it will, uh, it's there in further on in the slide. And 
that was truly beautiful because that forest is such a stunning stunner eagle nest um, and a great uh, place to bird second uh, has always i mean equally uh, uh, best sighting has been uh, hornbill sightings for me i've had uh, a hornbill um, pick up a giant squirrel which is, <laughs> i've seen that in my eyes so that was a fantastic sighting so yeah these two have been really good sightings a lot of my sightings i don't have pictures of uh, because you don't pick up the camera when when, when such a uh, unique uh, interaction in natural habitat is happening you just watch and i've watched quite a few interactions like that yeah 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 i'm sure it must have been really really exciting okay so here's a question from uh, my colleague pratik again he asks what are your suggestions for a person who has interest in birds but is not a bird watcher like that's okay uh, you don't need to be an expert to be able to watch birds um, our field guides are very convenient pick up the uh, grimet or inscape uh, field guide it is self explanatory you need to uh, go through nuances of just looking at the bird carefully enough to know what size is the bird what color is it and you can figure out the species yourself yeah. and this is a habit that you got to pick if you're going to Uh, watch birds uh, that is self engaging you don't need partners um, it it it's a fantastic activity if, if you're a bunch of people because there's always uh, knowledge sharing the more pair of eyes uh, looking at the animal uh, better insight into what you've just seen you seen you might get a glimpse and you might not forget the colors or the size of the bird it, it's also good because in the forest is very difficult to sometimes uh, get the right uh, identification So yeah, uh, go uh, if 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 it's becoming a challenging for you to kind of uh, identify species or know which bird it is, uh, you can always tag along with a seasoned uh, bird watcher. Makes things easier. Mm-hmm. Set the stone step uh, for future sightings. Yeah. 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 So okay. Um, a colleague of mine asked this question, and I'm going to follow it up with another. Um, uh, he's Mm-hmm. Jayanto says thank you Kaushik it's been a very interesting session uh why yeah. do you think or what do you think um, can be the way that we can promote uh, birding in india and generate more interest for it i mean we are known for the larger like the big cats like the indian tiger is more famous when it comes yeah. to people coming from across the globe to see it but not so much for yeah. the birds so what do yeah. you think should be an effort <laughs> from Uh, I would say DMC is like us one, and maybe from yeah. the general perspective as well. Yeah, general public also. Uh, the one one is definitely the lack of knowledge on what we have in terms of uh, fauna, where people don't know the animals that are there in the country, know them. Why is tiger famous? It's clearly because it's a flagship species, the apex predator, and it is uh, well, it, it, it is a gorgeous animal to look at. it has uh, over the years it, it it the the cool factor in in seeing and watching a tiger has, has kind of extrapolated the experiences of people so that's why people seek that animal i've always had people who've come uh, with with one specific species that they interested in and they've come over to uh, see that animal and they've seen plenty of others uh, that we managed to see and they've been quite Super excited and thrilled uh, seeing them. I would say if if you were to put an effort, put an effort uh, in creating a flagship species in an area. Mm-hmm. If if I were to go to Valparai, I would pick uh, lion-tail macaques and great Indian hornbills. If I were to go to Agumbe, I would put king cobra and Malabar pit viper as as, a, as an unique animal to see, uh, reptile to see. So that way. you uh, you enunciate on uh, species found in the area then you give light to a lot of uh, species that need attention in terms of conservation and it it all goes hand in hand uh, even with bird watching it it is very critical as an organization we we need to be ethical so uh, taking the consideration of how what what it takes to be ethical and how you can identify geographies and interesting species that you can see there and 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 in your uh, communication to the guest you should push at looking at these animals 
and these are not tiger reserves. I've never spent time in tiger reserves because that is truly uh, a, a boring atmosphere to be just being sitting sitting in the jeep. Uh, most of your exciting sightings actually happen by foot, uh, and there are forests that we can go to by foot and learn them, understand the diversity we have in the country. Um, I, I truly don't see a uh, it, 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 one beautiful thing is you don't need to convince a client that it's a beautiful animal. Uh, if, if they've had a sighting, they 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 are thrilled. Yeah, all yeah. the animals that we have and and we work around it. Yeah, but don't you? I mean, just to add on, like, don't you think that even infrastructure plays an important role in uh, not just uh, to sort of promote these areas as well, while they may be really endemic species and deserve the kind of attention. This also plays a pivotal role in you know uh, convincing a client to actually go and see these uh, species in, and places. Yes, uh, infrastructure do uh, play a role. At the, if the clientele is uh, with a specific need of a certain uh, three or four, four star hotel, because you wouldn't find anything in Agumbe, there are basic accommodation. But you need to have a platform uh, and the knowledge and wherewithal to tell a client, because there are clients who are okay with basic accommodation, but they are more keen on the content of their experience. Mm -hmm. And it's imperative that we are aware of what does it take to take them to Agumbe, still ensure they have a comfortable stay and yet still get to see the animal that they need to. Uh, that way, uh, the, and we've reached an age and time now where, they, where there used to be a time when we used to go to Agumbe, we used to camp in the bus stand. You know, we didn't have a place. The, this is not the time now. We've got places to stay and they are very nice, comfortable and culturally uh, there are very nice setups now. Even uh, you know, uh, foreign traveler would love it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's food for thought for us. I would say. Thanks, mm. Kaushik, for that. Mm. Uh, there's a question from another colleague who asks. Um, mm. I think he. Okay. Do you think male birds are more brightly colored than females? <laughs> very difficult to say. <laughs> um, uh, some species, uh, male birds are. Uh, lot less colored I, it, it, we we have such diversity you can never generalize them um, uh, that but color does play an uh, pivotal role uh, because plumage is everything breeding season is everything they they get to know that they're in the breeding season through colors it does uh, play a pivotal role but there's nothing like males are brightly colored than females but in fact uh, may males do put in a lot of effort to please the female, even if they're brightly colored. So that, that that's an exercise that happens in the wild. Definitely. I, I think I'm, I don't know if a lot of people have watched it, but the birds of paradise, there have been some amazing footage of the male bird trying oh to God, go the female what world. What all does he do? <laughs> yeah, it's really, I, I suggest everyone go and watch it. It's, it's, uh, it's just amazing to watch the antics that it does from cleaning to dancing to bringing out the best uh, colors in its uh, you know feathers it's just brilliant I think it's 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 amazing to just watch that but yes thanks thanks for uh, thank you Anil for that question and next we move on to another question by a colleague he asks Vipin asks um, uh, to get a perfect shot what should be the right strategy to chase the bird or to keep persistent patience I think we have persistent sort of patience. covered this but yeah they put, I would say, don't, uh, I mean, it's important to use, explore varied landscapes. How you do that is very important, especially for bird watching. And, mm. uh, uh, grasslands need uh, a bit of walking, forest, you can sit back, you get a lot of interaction, but you really need, to, uh, exactly why I said, to know the animal, know where you see them uh, regularly and, uh, and to be able to uh, get a perfect shot. You yeah. should do that exercise before and then uh, go out and photograph the animal. Yeah. But do you think, Kaushik, that uh, capturing smaller birds is, is more difficult than capturing the bigger ones? I mean, it's typically a trend with the tinier birds that they keep flitting from one plant to the other. Did, did you say uh, capturing smaller birds is easier yeah, than... Small, the, no, it's more difficult than capturing the bigger birds. Is there a thing like that or is it? 
not really bigger birds wouldn't come to the eye level they are higher up in the canopy and mm. very rare to see them in open landscapes mm. uh, and open perches um, even if they are uh, you can't get close to the animals so there 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 challenges everywhere yeah um yeah. but your uh, approach in methodology in photo- photographing birds uh, if that is right if you have uh, fairly well camouflage and if you have a height set up where you sit and without disturbing the animal it doesn't matter small or big you, you can capture them yeah uh, but yeah, yeah uh, the, the little ones are super fast uh, <laughs> they, they that might be a little challenging but nonetheless yeah. both are equally challenging uh we're going to take one last question actually i have a couple of questions after this but this is one question that i have from another colleague and then i'm going to get to the end of the presentation with a couple of quick questions for you uh soma asks um is there a book that you would like to suggest for amateurs which will help them know about birds like yeah. a beginner's uh, guide i i don't know if you all can see this is been can you all see the book i don't know i can't see myself one one second koshik i think i will um close the presentation and they'll be able to see you oh yeah yeah this is the birds of indian uh, subcontinent uh, grimit and uh, inskip mm-hmm. they have one on south india and they have one on uh, across the country these uh, two field guides have been sufficient for an amateur uh, in fact even a pro this this is all you need uh, one book is all you need to be able to go across the country and uh, about the species and know more about them it has everything that you require yeah thanks a lot koshik for that i'm sure uh, people have who have uh, who you have motivated now to go and do some bird watching will definitely pick up that book thank you so much for being with us i'm going to leave you with just two questions uh, the first one is if you had to pick one bird which would be your favorite from india which one would it be and the second question is which is the one region that you have uh, that you would suggest to people as uh, the first time birders to actually go and visit uh the second question is easy rangantittu would be the most ideal spot because it's already a tourism centric area guides are experienced um it's it's a short uh, it, it's very easy to get there uh, staying facilities are there so that rangunthi to bird sanctuary is fantastic for an amateur to kind of start seeing birds and see what it takes to in there and your previous question was uh what is your one favorite bird, bird that i had yeah oh i i love hornbills i yeah. oh, i I'm, i'm i still haven't seen all species of uh, hornbills i haven't seen narcondum i'd i'd love to go see that um hornbills has been One, one of my most I've been very curious looking at that animal. I've spent hours and I never for once gotten bored looking at that bird. It's truly a stunning bird. It is. That's my favorite bird. Yeah. I completely agree. Uh, also very unique looking. Uh, very very beautiful. I completely agree. Yeah. Okay. I although I said one last question. I have one more question actually. Where does India stand in terms of birding when you compare it to other countries in the world? It's it's picked up uh now uh, there are more than ever people because uh, back in the day uh, 15 years ago or 10 years ago you would have a handful of people uh, bird watching and it was it was it was quite beautiful there are a few friends of mine who kind of kept a data log of their bird sightings for the last 30 years wow uh, it's all hand written sightings of every day and and there are people who been birding every day for the last 20 30 years literally every day they at least go out in their balcony or outside their house and see what they see you know that, that it's become a habitual thing so um i i feel uh, uh the newer ones need to be more nurtured with with the entire uh, birding activity as uh, properly they, uh, they need more time spent uh, looking at birds so the photography and photographer realm has kind of fast forwarded the opportunity yes. they, they want to be able to cite everything they want to be able to photograph everything yeah and the best shot i know a lot of unethical practices are being made uh, in order to just photograph these birds i think as 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 an organization operating 
or an individual going out you should discourage everybody uh there is a new habit of people uh, doing playback calls of a bird to be able to get a response and then oh. uh, uh such practices should be avoided go quietly uh, stay quiet you get to see a lot of bird life um yeah that's what i would say but stick to ethical practices and, and yeah. bird a lot of great Thanks so much Kaushik for being with us and taking time out we're really looking forward to the second edition of uh you know birding in india where we touch more upon northeast uh they, they have some stunning photos i've seen it and uh, i'm really excited that we'll be having you back uh, join us back again for another session thanks again so much for yeah. doing this for us and we'll see you soon again Thank you. I had a lovely time talking as well. So it brought in a lot of memories from from last few years. I've, I've managed to just remember them now. I think. Thank you. <laughs> I had a lovely time. Great. All right, Kaushik. See you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.